My name is Gustavo Victor Goler. I've been in the traditional Spanish market for 31 years. Um, uh, most of my work uh, is based on, uh, on the traditions, but uh, I'd like to add a little bit of uh, sort of change and dynamics into my work. I, I do a lot of research into the saints, and I try to find different patronages that uh, pertain to those particular saints and, and pull out these patronages that people are not necessarily aware of. Uh, and I also like to uh, play with the design of my pieces just so that I can create a lot of movement, a lot of flow, and to be able to tell the story uh, of the saints in a different way. So often I work in, in a modern method, even though it is traditional. Uh, for example, something like this is our patron saint of Cyclist, even though she is a, uh, a 12th century saint. Throughout the years, uh, the, the stories of the saints develop and evolve due to different miracles, uh, uh, different situations with their communities. In this case, in 1949, Pope Pius XII declared her the patron saint of cyclists. And so, with that in mind, I decided that I would depict her on a bicycle. So this is actually an image of the Virgin Mary with the baby Jesus uh, riding in the back. So this is just one of the ways that I like to uh, represent my work. Yeah. In this case, we have, uh, from a technical point of view, this is a relief carving down in the bottom that has a lot of perspective lines that go back. And then on the top section is more of a rounded, three-dimensional um, carving. Well, here we have a typical Our Lady of Guadalupe. But I've taken the crescent, which is normally just down on the bottom, and enlarged it and sort of framed her around it. So even though she has all the same elements of any other Our Lady of Guadalupe, I just sort of changed them around and, and sort of recreated the composition, but it's still very recognizable as an Our Lady of Guadalupe. I like to do a lot of flowing things with all my robes. And here we might have a more traditional piece. This is the rising of Lazarus. So this is Christ's first miracle. This is Lazarus who is being brought back from the dead and we have Christ and uh, Martha of Bethany and Mary of Bethany who were the sisters of Lazarus. As he is rising from the tomb that we can see, uh, he is wrapped in a funeral cloth and I took that funeral cloth and sort of extended it so that I could create uh, the rest of the iconography. So I work both three-dimensionally and two-dimensionally, so I create retablos as well as um, as well as the brutos, but I'm, I'm largely known as a three-dimensional carver. As I mentioned, I've been here for 31 years, so my, my work has really evolved and changed throughout the years. I, I started off with very traditional methods, very traditional forms, and have evolved into you know more research, uh, more dynamic carving, uh, with a lot more movements. And I continue to do that to this day as a full-time artist, not only here at Spanish Market, uh, but just throughout my life. I've uh, dedicated my life to the study of the uh, devotional arts of New Mexico, so I studied a lot of the history. Uh, I have also have a parallel career as an art conservator where I restore a lot of the old New Mexico Santos. So I work for churches, museums, uh, galleries, collectors. So I have a really rounded sort of history uh, and knowledge uh, with the Santos uh, and the role that they play, not only here in New Mexico, but uh, really throughout all of Latin America and, and the personal sort of attraction that we have uh, with them. I lecture all the time, I, I teach, and I do you know tons of outreach uh, you know for kids in school and sort of continue the education of, of this type of art form and the different directions that it's taking. Don't do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, you know, being an artist, is, is, it can be pretty tough. I, I became an artist when I was 23 years old uh, as a full-time artist, so that was well before I clearly understood the economic diversity of what that meant. Uh, but really, as a full-time artist, uh, you, you're, you're pretty dedicated, and it requires uh, a lot of self-discipline and self-motivation because there's really nobody there that's going to tell you you know, what direction to, to take in your life. And so, 
being an artist, you also need the help of some sort of uh, assistant. In this case, I have my wife who does all the bookkeeping, a lot of the business end uh, of the operation because if you are a full-time artist, uh, you are running a business in essence. And so you still have to pay taxes, you still have to save for retirement. Uh, and so if you decide a career in art, you know, just remember that it, it helps if you have a little bit of business sense and, and, and a tremendous amount of dedication. Nowadays, which is different from when I was first becoming an artist, we have a lot of media resources. You can have a web page. You can do all sorts of YouTube outreach. You can promote yourself a lot different than in my time when you had to walk down the street with a portfolio and actually try to get into a gallery. In my case, I work independent of galleries for the most part because I develop relationships with my clients throughout the, the decades. I have clients that will collect for maybe 20 years. Not that they buy a piece every year, but they hang out uh, with me because we, we, we have a friendship and that's a great way to connect with clients. Um, but then you can also have a gallery as part of it if you can produce enough work uh, to do that. So it's, it's a lot easier nowadays to, to play the role of an artist if you, uh, uh, you know, with all the access, to, as I said, to media that, that we have. Good, you know, nowadays you can print a business card for pretty cheap, you know, all sorts of 